Jesus, I crave to know you just to know you will satisfy my soul. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is episode number 79. And I want to thank you for taking the time to join me in this continuation of reading um, my first book, Hosting His Presence. Today we are in chapter 4, and it's titled, Heaven is Where He Is. His presence always surrounds us. To separate God from anything He created would be like deciding to use no primary colors in a painting, only secondary colors. Primary colors are mixed to create secondary colors. Therefore, the primary color would still be embedded within the painting. There is no place we can run where God our Father does not exist or does not reach. No attempt at escaping His mighty arm would be successful. He is in all places for all time and is not limited by time or space. In the Genesis account, God created light. At his spoken word, let there be, light became. God separated the light from the darkness, and he called the light day and the darkness night. God reached into time, laid a hold of day and night, and separated them into their respective dimensions. What a powerful reality to consider. He is an infinite God, free from the constraints of time and space. The creator of these boundaries functions without submitting to them. Our finite minds use these parameters to help us process information, which causes us great difficulty conceptualizing such a limitless God. The Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, Revelation 13, 8, and 1 Peter 1, verse 20, is quite an overwhelming statement to process. Imagine an action considered accomplished before it began, written after the event, from the perspective of the past. Time and space have no hold on our God. The Creator is infinitely greater than the creation. His omnipresence surrounds, engulfs, encompasses, enfolds, and immerses all things for all time. I need to clear up some misconceptions regarding heaven. It is not just a disconnected spiritual place far away in the sky. It's not just an eternal reward saved for those who say yes to Jesus. When Jesus came, he brought heaven with him. Matthew called it the kingdom of heaven. Mark, Luke, and John called it the kingdom of God. Neither is wrong and both are right. Heaven is where God is. John told us that the Father and Son have made their homes in believers. John 14, 17 through 21 and Luke 17, verses 20 through 21. Thereby bringing heaven inside you. This reality doesn't take away our blessed hope of glorious heaven, but rather it gives us blessed hope while on earth too. What marvelous riches and promise do we have access to in this life? Not only do we have special access to this internal heaven, but we become brokers of heaven for others. Jacob saw a ladder with angels ascending and descending from heaven to earth, Genesis 28, 10 through 17. Jesus is that bridge between heaven and man, John 1, verse 51. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places, Ephesians 2, verse 6. Jesus 
is at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Romans 8, verse 34. Considering this, we are both here and in heaven, seated with Christ. When a king would travel from place to place, part of his court would travel with him. His kingdom remained intact back home, but a portion would travel with him. His kingdom was both fixed and mobile. When the king traveled to a new place, representatives would set up this new location to mimic the appearance of his home kingdom. They would replicate his home. Oftentimes, a representative would be sent ahead to the king's destination to announce his arrival, ensuring that it didn't go unnoticed. I hope the parallel comes alive to you. God's kingdom is not just heaven, but heaven is included in his kingdom. As Jesus, our king, came into his intended purpose, John the baptizer announced his coming. He set forth the declaration of what was being made available to them. As this traveling king would arrive, his subjects set up his accommodations to resemble his original home. Remember the prayer Jesus taught, Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Luke 11. We see within this prayer a duplication on earth as it is in heaven. Duplicating the desire of the Father can be seen as a type of heaven on earth. Don't get hung up on heaven as just a location. See it also as a state of being and manifested desire reflective of what our Father God desires. When we say, I'm in heaven, we are communicating an internal state within our beings. Of course, this statement can be used to reflect the internal state of an inferior reality, but I believe it bears witness to another truth about heaven. It is not just a location, and it is not just a destination. It's also a state of internal Eden where purpose is realized and actualized. Peace prevails and presence abides. Perhaps most importantly, it can be shared and demonstrated with those outside of the kingdom, needing restoration back to our Father. And this concludes chapter 4. And I want to thank you for taking the time. Uh, The next episode, we will continue on in chapter 5, titled, The Restoration of Your Garden. Hope this was a blessing to you, and we will see you on the next one. God bless. If it means that I'm close to you, I would trade a million lifetimes for a moment here with you.